Hi, this is Ruz Aliabadi from Ready AI. Um, it's, uh, um, it's an honor for me to introduce Dr. David Turetsky. Uh, he's a research professor at Carnegie Mellon University, also the chairperson for AI for K-12 initiative. Dr. Turetsky, thank you so much for your time. Hi, Ruz. It's great to be with you. Dr. Turetsky, the purpose of our call today is to learn more about AI for K-12 and is this five big ideas, and then we're going to be talking about the third idea. So what is AI uh, for K-12? So AI for K-12 is an attempt to set national guidelines for how to teach artificial intelligence to kids in grades K through 12. Uh, we, we think that kids are interested in this. They, they want to know more. Their teachers want to know more. But there isn't uh, currently guide, guidance for what kids should, uh, should know at different grade levels and there aren't enough resources for teachers to be able to teach this. So we're working on correcting that. Thank you so much. Uh, you also, um, at, uh, with your team uh, at AI for a K-12 initiative, design uh, five big ideas in AI. What are those five big ideas? Why, by the way, why are they called big ideas? Right, well, the idea is to, um, to give people a big picture of the field. And the, uh, the, I, the five big ideas was modeled after the uh, CSTA, that's the Computer Science Teachers Association, national computing standards. So we have national standards for teaching kids about computing, and, uh, but there's only two sentences in the entire standards about AI. So uh, we partnered with CSTA to develop guidelines for teaching AI and just as CSTA had five big ideas in computing, the five major concepts, major areas that kids need to, to be familiar with, we decided to uh, follow their example and come up with five big ideas in AI that would then be the organizing framework for the guidelines. So the guidelines are much more detailed, but you can think of these five big ideas as being like the chapter headings for um, the AI guidelines. We have a little graphic, which I uh, assume that you'll edit into the video. And uh, the five big ideas, the, the, I can just go through them quickly. Um, the first one is perception, that computers use uh, sensors to perceive the world. Uh, the second, just give me a second, I gotta readjust my window here. Um, the second is called representations in uh, reasoning. And it says that uh, agents maintain representations of the world and use them for reasoning. The third is learning, that computers can learn from data. So a lot of people have heard about machine learning. It's in the news all the time. Machine learning is one part of artificial intelligence. It's one uh, sub-discipline within artificial intelligence. The fourth big idea is natural interaction. And we say that uh, computers require many different kinds of information to interact naturally with people. So to understand human language, for example, human gestures, human emotions, uh, people are very complicated. And so it takes a lot of different kinds of knowledge for computers to understand us well. And then the fifth big idea is societal impact, that AI technology can impact society in both positive and negative ways. And the classic example of that would be the self-driving car. Um, someone who's, uh, who's handicapped or elderly and can no longer drive, um, to them, a self-driving car sounds terrific, but uh, if someone makes their living as a cab driver, um, self-driving cars maybe aren't uh, such a good thing. So um, as with most technology, there are upsides and downsides, and people need to think carefully about how their technology will be used and the different communities that might be affected in different ways when new technology is introduced. Thank you so much, Dr. Turetsky. On November 19, just about less than two weeks ago, you and your team released uh, the draft of the Big Idea uh, 3 with uh, the age bands and the progression chart. Uh, and uh, you made it available to the public. We will have the link to that, by the way, to the, to the, to the progression chart in the bottom of this video, um, as well as we're gonna have a link for the AI uh, K-12 working group and AI uh, for K-12 initiative. Uh, but uh, t tell us about why this is such a big deal. You guys made so much work. You put so much energy and so much work into big idea number three. Uh, tell us a bit uh, uh, more about that and just a little bit unpack that for our audience. 
Sure, so big idea three is learning. Uh, the idea that computers can learn from data. And um, machine learning um, is important because it's driven a lot of the recent advances in artificial intelligence. So a lot of problems that people have been working on for 40 or 50 years uh, and never getting satisfactory results. In the last 10 years with the advances in machine learning technology, all of a sudden things like speech recognition work reliably where they didn't before. Um, and the same is true for computer vision, the same is true for machine translation. So a lot of technologies that are part of people's everyday lives, the fact that you can talk to Siri or Alexa and they understand what you're saying, they don't, they don't have to say, what, what, what did you say? They just get it. Um, that was impossible 10 years ago. Um, and so the reason all these uh, technologies are working so well, the reason that um, you're, you're self-driving car, even if it can't drive completely autonomously, um, there's self-driving cruise control, there's automatic parking now. Um, the reason these kinds of things are working, uh, you can take your phone and point it at a Chinese menu and see the English translation. Um, it's, it's because of machine learning. Machine learning had, technology has made um, lots of goals in AI achievable. So it's, it's important for, for kids to understand how this works, in, in part just because it's part of being well-educated to understand how technology works when that, when that technology is, is central to your society. But the other reason is that there's a growing number of jobs in this area. And so uh, a lot of uh, kids today, when they're ready to enter the workforce, uh, they'll either be working with AI agents um, or uh, their job may involve using machine learning, training machine learning systems, maintaining machine learning systems. So, uh, and, and, and the, the fact is that this stuff is actually accessible. I and mean, people didn't used to think that. I mean, artificial intelligence used to be taught only in graduate school. And then it started to filter its way down to undergraduates. Um, but for a long time, no one thought that it was appropriate to teach in high school. And that's, that's changing. And so machine learning is actually something that you can make explainable and understandable to kids. And that's what we're trying to do with these guidelines. We're trying to show what the major concepts are in machine learning and how these can be made understandable to kids in various grade bands from kindergarten through 12th grade. Uh, you're right. I think uh, the, the chart, as uh, once people actually click on it to go down and look at it, is actually very, very, uh, in a simple way, divided into four different age bands, K to second grade, third grade to fifth grade, sixth through eighth grade, and ninth to, uh, through uh, twelfth grade, and going through different concepts, different learning objectives, enduring understanding based on those learning objectives. But you also made this available, you and your team, uh, you and your group, uh, for public also feedback. Um, uh, so what are you hoping to accomplish with that public feedback? Is this just getting the public engaged or is this something that you're looking for that you've got from the first two ideas and other ideas that you've made public in terms of the feedback loop and you're looking um, in, in terms of what you're looking for? Well, our, our take on machine learning is a little bit different than uh, previous attempts to explain machine learning. Uh, to the public or to, uh, to K-12 children. We, we've formulated things in a, in a way that, that we think is, is insightful, that will, that will give people insights they didn't have before. But the real proof of that is to, is to show it to people and see what they say. So um, we put these out there for, for public comment because we're, we're interested in hearing what people's reactions are when they, when they read this. So uh, as you noted, noted the uh, the guidelines are, are uh, published as a grade band progression chart. So it's like a giant spreadsheet. And so we have a, a columns for K2, 3, 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 12. The rows are the different concepts that make up machine learning. And so every cell um, is how do you explain this concept at that grade band. But in addition, uh, they're what we call the orange boxes, because that's how they're formatted in the, in the spreadsheet. Uh, there are these four um, essential ideas about machine learning that influence the way people think about machine learning. And in, and in part, these arose from uh, misunderstandings that we found when we talked about machine learning with, uh, with other people, with non-experts, with teachers. 
Uh, there are some common misunderstandings about machine learning, and we, we wanted to, um, to correct those. So um, we have these essential insights, the orange boxes, and then we have this list of concepts. Well, did we pick the right concepts? We, we think we did, but we want to put this out there for the public and see what, what people think and um, get constructive feedback. And then we will, we expect to make some revisions to these guidelines and issue an updated version. Yeah. And speaking of that feedback you wanted, uh, you would like to get from the public, we never really talked about the amount of work went um, uh, behind the scene to put these ideas together and really to come up with this draft. So who is part of this AI for K-12? So uh, are you just a bunch of computer scientists that are coming, with, uh, coming up with these ideas? Or who else is involved in developing these ideas in this manner as we're seeing it in the link below? this video? So it's a mixture of computer scientists and K-12 teachers. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, we knew that we'd have to have K-12 teachers involved in the project or what we produced wouldn't actually be useful. So uh, we assembled a working group uh, divided into four grade bands. We had uh, three to four teachers um, in each of these four grade bands. And we've been working with these folks for uh, two years now. Um, and they helped us draft uh, co the concept list and the treatments of the concepts for the big ideas. There's a steering committee. Uh, I'm the chair. Uh, Christina gardner McCune at the University of Florida is the co-chair. Uh, Deborah Seahorn, who was formerly with CSTA um, and was pivotal in, pivotal in creating the CSTA computing standards, um, she's on the steering committee. And we have one emeritus member, uh, Fred Martin, who is at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. So uh, we um, worked with the, uh, the teachers and we also had some AI experts. So people like Hal Abelson, Cynthia Brazil, um, those people also uh, attended some of the meetings and contributed to the development of the guidelines. And we have an advisory board as well. So these are people from, some of them from industry, some from academia, some from government. Uh, we get feedback from them. And so all these folks, and they're all listed on our website, the ar k 12org website. Uh, you can find a list of the names there. Um, they, all, they all helped us um, as we worked on these guidelines over a period of a couple of years. Dr. Tereski, I wanna thank you for your time and I wanna thank you for, uh, for uh, uh, chairing such an important committee and doing such an important contribution to the K-12 education and developing these guidelines, really investing the time and, uh, and uh, coming up with, with, with um, I shouldn't say simple because uh, I'm not doing it justice, but in a simple way explaining it to the, to, to the, to the K-12 market. And I think uh, it's amazing. I encourage everyone to go to AI4K12.org. You also have a mailing list, which we haven't talked about, or which I really hope educators and uh, folks that are interested in uh, K-12 education and artificial intelligence join that mailing list. And you have a fantastic resource on your webpage about other resources that are available from books to, to presentations to other, uh, to various, uh, various other things in AI and K-12. Uh, so I hope people check it out. And, uh, and I also hope folks uh, take a look at the link below to give their feedback, look at the progression chart. And uh, last but not least, when do you think we will be seeing other progression charts from the other ideas? Uh, and what's your time frame for that? We released the draft for Big Idea One Perception back in May. So we've already received a lot of feedback on that and we'll be working on the revised version of that uh, later this month. And then uh, we, still have, uh, we have still have Big Ideas Two, Four, and Five to go. So uh, we'll be working on those over the coming months. Um, you'll see releases of those sometime, sometime in the spring. That's wonderful. I can't thank you for your time. Uh, right now, as we're taping this, we're during COVID-19. A lot of people talk about predictions in the post-COVID-19 world. But let, let me ask you this. Um, uh, do you predict within the next five years, we will have AI concepts as part of the core curriculum of K-12 education in, in the United States and around the world? Yeah, I think, I think so. There's tremendous interest right now, not just in the U.S., 
but also uh, places like China, China, where there's a massive government push to uh, integrate AI instruction into uh, all grade levels. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, we're seeing we're seeing this. Um, it's worldwide, a worldwide interest in, in AI. Um, and in, you know, in part, it's driven just by the, the permeation of AI technology into our everyday life. So all these people walking around with smartphones, um, you know, they're talking to Google Assistant or Siri. Um, they, you know, they, they're living with these things every day. Um, and it's so, so it makes sense uh, for them to want to know how this stuff works and for them to want their children children to know so it's not just obscure science fiction anymore it's it's everyday life now i agree with you hey, uh, the, the ai for k-12 and five big ideas is not just for future computer scientists it's for every person in a in education today they should know about it once again thank you for your time uh stay healthy and uh i hope we'll bring you more um, and, and happy to see you more in 2021 as we see other big ideas coming out with you and your group. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. It's always a pleasure.